Welcome back everybody, Robert Taylor here from Wonderscape Studios, on with another tutorial series. Uh, we're going over landscape material uh, changes based off of blueprints decisions that we will set up. Um, in order for that kind of thing to work, you um, would either need to make a dynamic material within the blueprint, which you can do, um, or you can skip that step and create um, what is called uh, uh, material parameter collections. <clears throat> and when you do that, uh, that stuff can easily be referenced anywhere, and it will alter the parameters within that material as long as they are scalar or vector. Um, you cannot alter any of them outside of that um, unless you make a dynamic material and even that has its own restrictions. Um, so we're going to be going with the routes of the uh, parameter collections. Uh, it's not something that's commonly talked about or utilized uh, and we will start off by making uh, the grass go from green to brown so transitioning from um, summer to winter, uh, not winter, fall. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is in the curves, I moved everything that's uh, that's in curves into a new, new folder called Landscape Starting Curves. Uh, so go ahead and place all of those in there. And then you're going to create a new one called Landscape Alteration Curves and open it up. The first thing we're going to make is a curve atlas. So if you right click in there and you type in atlas, you're going to get a, a curve atlas right here. Once you have it, um, I named mine CA for Curve Atlas underscore Seasons because that's where I'm starting. Now when you come up here, a Curve uh, Atlas is nothing by itself. It's just there and it's taking up space and doing absolutely nothing. So the first thing you need to do is create a, a curve. So we're going to go ahead and hit plus and then you're going to come back over here, right click, type in Curve. You're going to want this one right here. Once you click on it, you'll want to choose Curve Linear Color. And then I named mine C underscore Fall. When you open it up, yours is going to be black and white. So black on this side, white on this side. For the very first one, you'll want to click on, double click on it and choose the color you want. I went with a very yellowish green uh, for the first one. And I continued to transition on into other colors, uh, dark colors, lighter col colors of browns. Uh, now, something you need to note, the color of the base texture will alter the appearance of this. What I mean by that, if I come here into Surface 1, and if I come over here and change this saturation to 0, now I hit Save. Because I'm not changing it in the instance, you're not going to see much of a change. But, change this to a 2. Up here, browned up a bit. This needs more coaxing. Because the underlining material is brown, browns become more prominent. Greens start turning more brown. So you need to make sure you remember that. Um, make sure that you remember that your curve only alters what's already there. So if you want your material to start out just black and white, or it won't even be black, it'll be whites and shades of gray, then change the saturation down to zero, and you can alter everything utilizing the tint influence, if you so choose, but it won't work because you turn saturation to zero, and alter everything utilizing the curve. So that's how that works. Now back to what we were doing. Now you're going to want to come back in here to your curve atlas and you're going to place C underscore, I named mine fall, right in here. Hit save. Now we're going to come in here into the surface. Now where we alter this is important. And here's why. I will show you. Right click and type in curve. You're going to get a curve curve atlas row parameter and I'm just going to name this one um, 
alteration. No, it's seasons, so I'll I'll name it seasons. Seasons. Uh, fall curve. Let me open this up and zoom way in here. That way I can make this easier for those watching to see. So here in the curve, right now, we wouldn't be able to, we would have to pick one or the other. Right now this one doesn't have anything in it because we just made it. So come over here, choose seasons and fall. Now I'm getting this brownish color. So what we're going to want to do is hold down the letter L and click, you'll get alert. Put uh, the main one into A, the new one into B, and come in here into curve. And it starts giving it this brownish tint because it's at 0.5, which is what we want. At 0 and at 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, you can see how we're able to alter this. Uh, now this is the best place to put it. And here's why. I'll put this back to 0.5. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. We'll place this right here, this right here, that in there. And we place that right here. If we change this to 1, this is what we get. It's not brown, is it? But if we do this, put this to one, we got what we wanted. So it matters where you put things. When it comes to the colors, you want it directly where the color is going to be altered. Um, obviously, we'll, we will be making a function, but for now, we want to make sure it works. Uh, and this is the easiest way to do it because then as we're doing it, we can see the changes as they're happening. So in all actuality, technically, this is done if you wanted it to just slowly fade over time. Uh, and we'll show that action right here. Now, if we come right here, I already created it uh, in the landscape material layers I created landscape material parameter collection folder. You want to make sure you create that folder. And then we're going to come here and uh, you can type, but I can't remember the exact words for it. I believe it's exactly what I typed. But if you come in here to materials, material parameter collection, click on it. Material parameter collection, so MPC. And I'm going to name this one Seasons underscore fall. Uh, you can have an extremely long and tedious one of these if you choose. I don't like to do that. So I separate everything into their own little section. Helps keep things organized in my point of view. So for this one, we're going to name it. It's a scalar is that's all it can be is either scalar or a vector the default value is zero and we're going to change its name from scalar to fall color transition hit save now we're going to come back into season one and i don't believe that oh it does work so you can drag and click. Obviously, right now, nothing's been chosen. Click on that. Another way is to do um, material parameter. Let's see here. Collection parameter. There you go. And then you can choose what you want from there. Anyways, so yeah, you would come here, choose which one you wanted and then choose which parameter. We'll place that right here. So right now it's set to zero. I'm gonna hit save. Let it do its, its thing. And then for the time being, 
just to show that it works once everything is done. Perfect. Oh, come on, hurry up. I want to move this. Thank you. We will come over here into characters. No. Third person. Blueprint. Third person character is where I'm going to place it in this tutorial. Those who are following my mechanic tutorial will know that we use the controller itself for inputs. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. But for now, what we're going to do is right click and type keyboard one. Place that there. So now, every single time keyboard one is pressed, we want something to change. So I'm going to right click and do collection parameter. How did I get that in there beforehand? Let's see if I can do it again. I cannot. One second while I look at my notes because I have it set up in a different project that I was working on with somebody. Come over here. Sorry about this. I thought I remembered how I did it, but I does not. You know what? I know I can find it from here. Click on this. this sorry almost there set scalar parameter value awesome all right so the next thing we do we're going to right click and set scalar parameter value and i want a collection we're going to come in here we're going to click on this we're going to come here click on that now the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do to ensure things happen how we want, actually we're just gonna do it this way because right now we just wanna show it working. We set to one. File, save, make sure that this works because this is how you do it. And we're gonna hit play. Bam. But it's not gonna change it back. It's gonna keep it at one. So if we're wanting it to change over time, we would want to do, let's see, come over here to variables, name this uh, color transition. Again, you don't have to do this part. This is just me ensuring that it works. Click on this. Come over here, begin play. Set this to zero. Then every single time we click, control and do a plus point one. Do that. And then we're going to reset it. Like that. Save. This should work theoretically. We're going to hit play. There we go. Now I'm going way past one, so it's turning things to red. But as you can see, it works so we have it transitioning and we know we can make it transition using a collection so with that we're going to end here um, next episode we will get it working based off of height so it'll start at a higher position 
and slowly transition down, um, you know, simulating how the weather, uh, how the seasons change the grass at a higher level faster than it changes the grass at a lower level. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or have any suggestions or ideas or requests, please put those in the comments below or join my Discord, which is also linked below. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe, and thank you, and have a great day.